you've been keeping up with the latest technology news, you've probably heard your fair share of articles talking about artificial intelligence and how it's going to change how we do business. In today's world, we can talk to our phones through services like Siri, Google, or Cortana to make reminders, calendar events, call friends, and even make purchases. The ability to decipher our words into actions is essentially based on the artificial intelligence application known as Natural Language Processing, or NLP for short. Stay tuned as we talk to a very special guest about NLP, artificial intelligence, and how this will impact marketers and their customers on this episode of the Content Marketing for the Future podcast. Welcome back to the Content Marketing for the Future podcast, where we discuss AI and marketing with industry pros. Today, we're sitting down with Luca, the CMO of Expert System. With a company that continues to expand worldwide with their vision of producing applications in language technology, you can bet Luca will know a thing or two about using advances in technology to better your communications. So without further ado, let's get this interview started. When you think of natural language processing in real life, you can connect it to when you ask Siri or Google or even Cortana something on your smartphones. But what is natural language processing or better known as NLP? And why do you think we're only hearing about it now? Well, uh, NLP has been around for um, for a while. Um, I think that the, the dream of having, of having a computer that uh, understands language in a way that is similar to um, what people do uh, has been around for many years, and you know, we've been thinking about that for um, for a long time. Uh, but I think that for a while it was mainly a field uh, of study, of research, and so forth. And that uh, we were happy enough uh, with uh, the simpler way to navigate uh, content, which was you know like the Google-like approach, so finding if a keyword is present or not. But I think that with the explosion of content that we've been seeing in the last few years is becoming very, very important to, to understand better. And, uh, and this is what I think brought the, um, the natural language processing back, and now it's becoming mainstream. I think that between uh, the need of having interfaces that uh, understand the way we speak, and at the same time, the capability to navigate huge amount of content in a way that is more similar to what people would do, made this concept uh, of uh, you know, understanding, making a computer understand language much more relevant today. Mm. So could you give some examples of seeing how NLP is connected to content? Yeah, so, so let, let's imagine, you know, like, uh, obviously, the, the first example you made, obviously, is the, is the interface like Cortana or Siri or so forth. But let's think also first uh, at the typical, uh, you know, content navigation experience. And imagine that uh, you can create some uh, order in the content you need to process. So, for example, you can uh, categorize very in a very rich way the content, understanding, uh, for example, if a stream of news has news around foreign policy versus, you know, sport and inside sport, uh, you know, like NFL versus baseball and so forth. Uh, this would give you the opportunity to have the content coming to you instead of you looking to go uh, mm. and look for the content. And I think that this is becoming uh, growingly more uh, more relevant. With Through natural language processing, you can be you can have very rich way to classify your content. You can navigate your content across topics uh, based on specific concepts that are present in one or the other. And the deeper you understand the language, the more you can do that. And obviously there is a second level, which is you know when you actually uh, have a voice activated interface, in those situations, making sure that the interface can process words and so can understand language is, is at the core of how the system works. So the two things I think are, are two, two good examples. If Siri would not understand the meaning of words, it would not be able to retrieve the right information, especially with the fact that many words have many different meanings. So that's, I think, what sits behind that. Right. So I don't know if you had a chance to look at our platform, but we use natural language processing as well to help give feedback on how to edit your content better for your audience. Mm. Um, have you seen anything quite like that in the industry or mainly just it's very popular in, let's say, our smartphones right now? 
Well, I think uh, I think it's something that will become uh, is becoming actually uh, you know um, highly 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 relevant. You know, being making sure that uh, you can understand the intent of a content and retrieve related content in an intelligent way is becoming I think very very important and it has different kind of applications. So, mm-hmm. in addition to the content you create, think about the world of um, you know, online advertising, for example, okay. being able to link to a content the the most relevant you know, advertising. I think it's something that is becoming more and more relevant, uh, or making sure at least not to connect the wrong and the wrong content. So, <laughs> basically, giving out the right message to the right people and not exactly. upsetting anyone. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, what makes Expert System different than other language processing softwares? Um, from the beginning, we've been around for many years, um, and uh, you know we were mainly in Europe for the first years of our history, and then now we moved to the to North America. We chose from the beginning an approach that was, uh, I, I think, uh, was considered uh, a little bit uh, not required. You know, like we started from the beginning in trying to understand the meaning of words in context. So at the core of what we're doing, there is the capability to understand, for example, if stock in a certain context means shares versus you know broth versus uh, the warehouse stock and so forth right. and uh, you know when we started was you know the end of the 90s i think that people thought that uh, keyword or using just keyword was good enough because the amount of content while significant was not overwhelming like this right now Mm -hmm. and uh, the interfaces natural language based interfaces were still at maybe just in the labs and so forth but we see that now the wave is actually uh, changing and everybody's trying to get a deeper understanding and that's what gives us um, a good opportunity because we chose to do that from uh, from the beginning so what made you see that you had opportunity in north america and not just in europe (laughs) yeah well uh, obviously north america is um from any point of view, is uh, much more prone to innovation and ready for innovation. Mm. And um, so we we thought uh, that uh, the, the time for adoption was a little bit ahead of time in uh, in, uh, in the U.S. and uh, and Canada compared to uh, to Europe. So we came, uh, we did some uh, some tests in certain vertical where we had already some good customers. And um, what we saw is that. We were right. There is a significant need or at least attention to innovation. Mm-hmm. And several big customers were ready to to look into into doing things slightly different. And that's what generated the first uh, the first opportunities for us. And then we built on top of that. And today we have a presence in um, both in the U.S. and Canada. So what sort of pushback have you seen from both Europe and North American clients when it came to trying to convince people that this was a necessary piece of software that they should be using? I think the mainstream or at least the more legacy system are still thinking and promoting pure statistics or pure, you know, kind of just looking at distribution of keyword as a way to to manage uh, content. So we had to uh, our approach was more considered a little bit more like from research level and so on. People did not really wanted to look into the possibility to implement that at scale. Right. And so that what generated the, some of the objections that we saw from from real customer. On the other end, again, there is a lot of appetite right now for uh, looking at more effective way to manage uh, in general content. Mm-hmm. And I think that people are very open to to look for different things. And that's how we got opportunities. And um, these opportunities actually turning into good business. Uh, one of the first customers that we had was an oil and gas company. And, um, and you would not think about oil and gas being a very... Yeah. Interesting. Uh, exactly. Uh, looking for innovation. The reality is that we found very, very advanced ways because of the amount of information that these kind of companies are looking at. Very cool. So specifically for marketers, how can natural language processing systems and artificial intelligence help with global clients and customer feedback data? Yeah, exactly. I think the customer feedback is really a core, core element. If you consider that through natural language processing and through, in general, natural language interfaces, you establish a 
new way, a new channel of communication with the customers. Okay, so customers uh, are not forced. Uh, as they were in the past, if they want to talk to you, to just go through a call center, they know that they can use a mix of uh, digital channel to connect. Could be text messages, could be you know a box on the website, right. could be email. By making all this channel available, what you're actually achieving is that small incremental in your cost, you get a lot of data. You open up a way for customers to tell you more things about their experience. And at the same, the same tool that enable you to do that, so the capability to understand language and answer and offer answers and so forth, that can be used in analyzing the amount of data and creating deep analytics. And the advantage of these deep analytics that you can have is that they're in real time and they are not uh, you know, kind of biased like a typical market research. When you actually interject and understand a real time communication with the customers, you get much more value than sending out a form and asking the customer to fill it and then getting the answer three months later. So Yeah, it's a bit uh, restricted when you do it that old way. Exactly, I agree. I completely agree. So basically you do you enable a new way to communicate and through the new way to communicate you get much more um, information if you want. What sort of information can you get back? You know, you can get um, um, information that can predict for example, um, in, uh, in action from your customer. You know, we work mainly with enterprises, so I can give an example by looking at how, you know, a customer interact with, um, with a bank, for example, the things that the customer writes. Mm -hmm. You can create model that calculate the propensity of the customer to go and look for a competitor, for example. You use machine learning with this data to predict. That's one way where I think, and we are just at the beginning, I think a lot can be done mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in the future. Another, another element can help you in creating, if you want, uh, market audiences. You, know, you can, you can uh, uh, understand uh, from uh, the interaction with your customers, their interest, and integrate that with the data that are already given to you when they you know, do transactions and so forth. And this would help you, for example, to deliver a much more targeted message to this audience group than what you could do by just sending a, you know, a general blast to, to everybody. And obviously there is a typical case that uh, if you understand very well the tone of a discussion, the sentiment, and the, more than the sentiment, I would say the feelings that are related to the communication, you can actually decide maybe to give a different level of priorities and so forth. So you can actually design a much more targeted one-to-one -one, uh, marketing, if you want. Very interesting. So speaking of targeted messages, specifically for marketers, how can artificial intelligence software and applications then help to improve our marketing and content strategies? <clears throat> I'll give you a, an example. Um, we have done, um, as a company, we have also a spin-off of a company you know, that uses our core technology to uh, design, uh, uh, if you want, uh, online uh, marketing, or, sorry, online advertising campaigns. And um, what we did is, uh, was actually to use the navigation information of potential customers Mm -hmm. through you know, not one-to-one -one because it's not something that you can do but by audience if you want and this company was a, a cable television company in Europe and uh, what we did is by understanding more about the context about a specific uh, audience segment for example we saw if people were more interested in I don't know uh, sport versus uh, movies versus uh, or maybe in the morning they were more interested in general news and in the afternoon they were more interested in sport or so forth. By okay. putting together these numbers, we uh, designed campaigns that were basically changing the message based on the kind of audience you have. Oh. So it's, uh, it's uh, you know, there, there's a lot of things you can do uh, through online advertising, through cookies and so forth. In this case, it was not cookies, but more just using the navigation information to, to understand the interest. And, and this is something you can do only if you can analyze in deep in the content. Interesting. So with these softwares, you're able to unify your message and create the most effective message per channel. 
Exactly. You Very can cool, uh, you yeah. can understand the, the channel, you can understand the audience segment, and then based on that, you can, if you want, uh, target with, with copy or content that is much more, uh, I think that basically generate more in potential interest in uh, in the and and we know that everybody is competing for interest right now mm -hmm. so if you can just make your message slightly different or slightly more appropriate i think you have an edge so that edge what kind of return have your clients seen by implementing these uh, techniques i think that the first layer you see in terms of return is definitely in the automation you know like uh, if you enable a um, let's say a natural language uh, based self-help uh, on a website or something like that you know that the first gain you have is that the cost of serving the customers decreases because you can automate pieces of that right so you you have that first return usually when I when I talk to potential customers you have to count on that that being your foundation, and then uh, how much you can get in terms of uh, top line uh, return or generating more revenue it really depends on how committed you are to take this data and and uh, and work on predictive models. So I think that uh, <laughs> the worst case is that you get you know good return from automating but I think that the really long-term play is that you can uh, increase uh, your revenue by you know we talked about marketing but sometimes is uh, sometimes is marketing sometimes it's just customer satisfaction so you can basically serve your customer better and I think that we are still at the beginning there but I think there's a lot of room in the next months mm -hmm. yeah I um I've had com a couple of encounters with chatbots, actually. So you can send a message to somebody working, you know, at that company right away, and that's in case you need help with something. And then for another company, I ask a question, and it spits out an answer that's kind of not what I was looking for. <laughs> so in a lot of cases, I've seen there have been people who aren't really pleased with the responses they're getting from these chatbots. So what's your opinion when it comes to best practices, I guess, when we yeah. start implementing this kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, I think that the, as usual, lots is around the level of commitment and uh, how much uh, you're focused in designing the user experience you want. What I mean is that your feature of the system expose you to uh, you know, if you're a bit superficial or if you're not really thinking through and uh, and if you're not using at the, at the core technology that can really understand uh, the intent of the question, it's very easy to kind of cut corners and have a, a negative uh, impact on your customers. What I always suggest uh, is that, first of all, you need to have clearly in mind what you want to automate, what you want to uh, what you want just maybe to streamline in your process because that's the, the basic the basic aspect maybe you want just to automate the the simplest interaction at the beginning and then building on top of that usually I think it's a good best practice or creating different layers so you have a full automated layer to to manage certain kind of interaction and then you go into something that where the NLP technology is just supporting maybe at the beginning, a person who actually validates the communication. I think that thinking that you can fix everything in one shot and it exposes you to the experience that you mentioned. Mm. So not quite there yet, <laughs> basically. Not quite there yet for everything. <laughs> yeah. Not quite there yet for everything, but uh, quite there for uh, several several aspects that could be could be relevant for an organization. I think that we are not yet in front of, a, of a, the, the possibility to have a, a chat box that can answer to you to any question you can have in any moment in time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that if you you know the context, you know the you know you learn about the customer and so on, you can automate a big a big portion of that. Well, yeah. If anything, it's a it's a step forward, and from there, from the data that we get back, we're able to better craft a message that will make the person asking the question happy in the future. Hopefully, yeah, yeah, I, I actually agree with that. Mm -hmm. So, in social media, where can we see NLP, and should we be afraid? <laughs> well, I think, I think we should be afraid in general about uh, the amount of information we leave uh, on, uh, on social. Media. No, um, again, as usual, there's a you know 
we need to be we need very careful. What I mean is that if uh, you think about the capability to use NLP to gather better understanding of general phenomena, you know what are the new trends, what uh, what something is is going out of fashion, or what are the topics. And, and I'm, I don't mean an hashtag, I mean really topics of conversation that drive engagement. Okay. I think you can do a lot of different things. And obviously, when you bring this to the extreme, people can leverage this kind of technology to go to maybe things that are not even you know, completely legal. But again, uh, it's not the technology itself. The technology itself gives you the opportunity to have a window on, um, on what's going on in your market, what's going on in general in the world. And uh, the deeper you understand language, the more you can actually get out of it. And uh, being afraid is more what can come from how some people are actually using and taking advantage of uh, the, the information that people maybe unwillingly or not knowing mm. uh, leave, leave out there. But again, I want to have a positive spin, and I think that uh, there is a lot of things that you can do as a marketer today in understanding the trends, in understanding the topics of discussion, and that can help and should help in, in designing your, your message to the audience. Well, bringing back around what you said earlier, it has helped a lot of people stand out from all of the content that's out there there's so much and it's helping individual organizations better connect personally to their customers and their clients so that's the, i think that's the biggest benefit of implementing uh, nlp technology so it is kind of scary you're right when uh, people are agreeing to these terms of conditions when they don't really understand what they're exactly. agreeing to because you know we get we have to read these long pieces of text and nobody understands the complicated language in them so i guess the takeaway is just be cautious as everything else on social media and anything (laughs) online (laughs) yeah and 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 the reality is that in in this case uh, again it's not uh, the uh, technology itself the problem is uh, you know maybe who is managing the platform of interaction and so on that is uh, uh, not making sometimes very clear about you know, what are the terms and conditions, the terms and conditions are changed all the time. And so that makes it difficult even for people who want to be careful about how much they want to share, how much they want the information shared to be used. But on the on a pure aspect of the technology, what you can actually do is that because you can have a deeper understanding, I think you can have a much more uh, specific understanding of your world, your market, and that means that you can actually do a better, a better job. Mm-hmm. So where do you see NLP going in 10 years from now? Well, I think that for sure um, we're going to see new generations of natural language-based interfaces that are going to become uh, progressively much more effective and more broad than what you can have right now. And I think that areas that uh, are going to be of interest is uh, the merge of uh, technology approach like the one we chose where we go and try to really replicate what people do when they read and all the advances that we're seeing in machine learning. I think these two things together are going to uh, merge into a a new generation of NLP technologies that they're not going to be acting like people fully, (laughs) but they're going to really, really make it more effective to communicate using your voice or using your uh, normal writing uh, with, with a machine. Can we have some examples? Like, is it just is going to be in like phone technology more, or like when we order something at a restaurant? Where do you see it? What industries? I think it's going to be in the interface, and so in the, the interface, we'll start definitely from transactions. You know, like could be could be if you want uh, ordering at restaurant or using the phone to do things of that sort. But I think that uh, is going to grow. Example, another early adopter is going to be for sure the car, in the car industry. Um, you know, using voice to control the old vehicle and and so forth instead of having to read 300 pages manual and then not understanding anything <laughs> what needs to be done. Um, but the reality is that I think that in the moment when uh, this uh, barrier to the interface is going to drop or lower. I think that there will be a lot of possible innovation also in the area of health 
thinking about you know virtual doctors or at least uh, emergency calls to be managed in real time and and you know i think that we need to be careful not to over promise as we often do but i think that there's going to be you know really a change in the way we we interact with our uh, computers and so on. So. Mm, sounds exciting and a little scary at the same time. <laughs> but I think it's because it's so new and it's it's hard to grasp not to do something manually anymore with by being able to just ask your technology to do something for you. <laughs> Let's say only the boring things. Uh, hopefully the <laughs> interesting thing will be left to us. The interesting thing would be help them helping us perform surgeries. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, are you excited or afraid of the AI and NLP evolution that's happening as we speak? We can definitely see it making our lives more efficient and believe that technologies with NLP can make communications more effective. As for Luca and his expert system team, don't forget to tell him what you thought of his insights over on Twitter at Skagliarni. Follow us on Twitter at Atomic underscore Reach for more about machine learning and AI impacting your content marketing strategy. Thanks so much for listening, Atomic Reach fans. This has been Amanda Chu signing off.